All right, first question. Uh, what was your reaction once you found out that you were going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame here? I didn't know what to think. You know, I, it's kind of a shock, you know. It's like I, I got in, inducted to the Walk of Fame down in Rockford a couple of years ago, and that was pretty cool. And then it just kind of was like, wow, you know, it's just kind of one of the situations that you, you don't realize that time has went by that fast and you've done what you've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, to get, you know, get that call was pretty, was pretty special. Okay. And uh, what are you doing now? Uh, where do you live and are you still associated with auto racing at all? Yeah, I'm still racing. I raced last year. I actually took a year off um, and then I went back this year and raced, you know, like 10, 12 races. And I uh, live in Madison. Uh, I got a couple, I own a couple bars and, you know, drive wine shop and a bunch of different things. Okay. So. All right. And what are some of the memories from your racing career that uh, some of the things that stick out in your memory from your racing career? Well, geez. <clears throat> a lot to choose from. <laughs> oh my God, I mean, you know, um, coming here and Slinger in 80, in 80, or, you know, in 82 and telling the owner I'm going to be the track champion next year and uh, doing it was pretty cool at the age of 22 in the state of Wisconsin, which, you know, was a phenomenal feat because like I told everybody, out of the 50 greatest short track asphalt guys in the country, 40 lived here at, the, at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I don't care what they say, who they say, there's guys they never even heard of that were phenomenal. Um, to do that, you know, then to, from 87 through 97, I mean, I was pretty much king of the world short track race and whatever it was, you know, five snowball derbies, four snowball national titles, you know, just, you know, getting a shot down south. <clears throat> Uh, more proud of the short track career than the NASCAR mm -hmm. right now. <clears throat> and why do you think Wisconsin has such a stiff competition in the short track? Well, I mean, uh, from my house in Edgerton at the time, you could race, geez, 10 or 11 different racetracks in 100 miles um, <clears throat> radius. Uh, you know, we race five nights a week. And, you know, one year I ran 117 or 119 shows. And, and uh, you know, I, I heard Johnny Sutter say a couple of years ago, and it's just too much work to run 12 races a year. And I said, you know, it wasn't so much the problem of, of <clears throat> racing 115, 20 races a year, but it was drinking in the parking lot until daylight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was the hard part. You look back at it now, you go, man, how do we even function, you know? But uh, it was a lot of racing and a lot of, lot of, lot of fun. I got more than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And being inducted into the Hall of Fame, where, did it, where does that rank on? In your highlights of your career? You know, it, it, it didn't really hit me until I read an article from one of the guys that run the museum here that um, he said that, you know, I mean, Trick was one, 1200, and I probably won over 400, and, you know, and I had to race against them guys, mm -hmm. you know, you know, whew. Um, but he said that, uh, you know, no doubt that I'd probably be in the top 10 of all, you know, these kind of short track drivers ever, and that kind of really hit me, because mm -hmm. I mean, there's thousands, mm -hmm. and uh, to even be considered like that is pretty cool. Who were some of your toughest competitors when you raced? Well, like I said, <laughs> out of the 50 best in the country, I mean, 40 lived here, I mean, you know, Trick and Shear, Refer, Watson, you know, Johnny's, I mean, all the guys getting up to time. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on, Mike Miller, Larry Deegans, you know, Mark Marzafka, Jim Bach, I mean, it, it, it don't end, mm -hmm. you know. The Carlsons, you know, the Holshausens, um, just, you know, and 95% in of the guys were great guys, you know. We raced side by side every night and never tore up <clears throat> because we raced five nights a week. And if you did something wrong, Bill Grimley would come on the flag stand and he'd stop the race and whack in the windshield and chew your ass and make you feel like you're about this big in front of everybody. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, it just was a lot of respect, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of great people, and just, you know, I got a couple of good stories tonight to tell, you know, of a couple of guys here, Watson, Ziggler, that actually helped me a ton in my career. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know they don't even know, they probably don't remember even telling me, <laughs> you know, but I just, um, I just finished my sh new shop up in, by one of the bars under there, working on a 69 Roadrunner, Weldon metal and you know like I love fabricating and just so you get time to think and mm -hmm. 
you know, process stuff and try to come up with a, a story for the night. So mm -hmm. pretty cool. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Ah, it's just been a great year, you know, great career. I mean, you know, what I never ever expected, you know, doing what I had with nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's my mom's drive, my dad's knowledge, and a lot of effort for a lot of people. And, you know, it isn't like today where, you know, Danny Warbucks credit card racing, mm -hmm. you know, is where it's at. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you know the, the world changes, and obviously it's definitely changed, but, you know, back then we made our own things and did our own, you know, build our own stuff. And, Nowadays, it's just how much money can you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very fortunate that I got to learn from the greatest and, and race the greatest era of short track racing there was, and um, a lot better than it is today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay.